ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो ऑफ कोर्स दिस एपिसोड कामसा किल्ड ओनली कामसा वाज मरोस फॉर ही नाइदर क्लैप्ड nor offered benediction to krishna kamsa resented that the trumpets and drums should be played for krishna's victory and kamsa was very sorry that the wrestlers had either been killed or had fled the assembly kamsa therefore immediately ordered the band to stop playing and he addressed his men as follows I order that these two sons of Vasudev be immediately driven out of Mathura and the cowherder boys who have come with Krishna and Balaram should be plundered and all their riches taken away Nanda Maharaj should immediately be arrested and killed for his cunning behavior and that rascal Vasudev should also be killed without delay also my father uvasena who has always supported my enemies against my will should also be killed when kamsa spoke in this way lord krishna became very angry with kamsa and within a second krishna jumped onto the high dais of king kamsa Kamsa was prepared for Krishna's attack for he knew from the very beginning that it was Krishna who was to be the supreme cause of his death Kamsa immediately unsheathed his sword and prepared to answer the challenge of Krishna with sword and shield as Kamsa wielded his sword up and down hither and thither Lord Krishna the supreme powerful lord caught hold of Kamsa with great force the supreme personality of godhead who is the shelter of the complete creation and from whose lotus navel the whole creation is manifest immediately knocked down the crown from the head of Kamsa and grabbed his long hair in his hand Krishna then dragged Kamsa from his seat to the wrestling dais throwing him down then Krishna at once straddled Kamsa's chest and began to strike him over and over and over again simply from the strokes of Krishna's fist Kamsa lost his vital force to assure his parents that Kamsa was dead Lord Krishna dragged Kamsa just as a lion drags an elephant after killing it When the people saw this there was a great roaring sound from all sides as some spectators expressed jubilation and others cried out in lamentation From the day Kamsa heard that he would be killed by the eighth son of devaki kamsa was always thinking of krishna with his disk in hand and because kamsa was very much afraid of his death kamsa was thinking of krishna in that form 24 hours a day without stopping even while eating while walking and while breathing so naturally Kamsa got the blessing of liberation. We learn in Bhagavad Gita, Sada Tad Bhava Bhavita. A person gets his or her next life according to the thoughts in which one is always absorbed. Kamsa was thinking of Krishna with his disk, which means the Narayana form. who holds four things disk conchal lotus flower and club 
according to the opinion of Vaishnava authorities, Kamsa actually attained Sarupya Mukti after death. That is to say, Kamsa attained the same form as Narayan, Vishnu. Because on the Vaikuntha planets, all the inhabitants have the same bodily features as Narayan. So after his death, Kamsa attained liberation and was promoted to Vaikuntha Loka. And from this instance, we can understand that even a person who thinks of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as an enemy gets liberation or a place in Vaikuntha planet. So what to speak of the pure devotees who are always absorbed in favorable thoughts of Krishna. Since the enemy of Krishna is killed and gets liberation, he is placed normally in the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. Since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is all good, anyone thinking of Krishna either as enemy or a friend gets liberation. But the liberation of the devotee and the liberation of the enemy are not the same. The enemies generally get the liberation of Sayuja or merging into the existence of Krishna or merging into his body. But sometimes, as in the case of Kamsa, one gets Sarupya liberation living in Vaikuntha with the same four-handed form as Narayan. Kamsa had eight brothers headed by Kanka. All of them were younger than Kamsa and when they learned that their elder brother had been killed, they all combined together rushing towards Krishna in great anger to kill Krishna. Kamsa and his brothers were all Krishna's maternal uncles, brothers of Krishna's mother, Devaki. So, when Krishna killed Kamsa, Krishna killed his maternal uncle, which is technically against the regulations of Vedic injunctions. Although Krishna is independent of all Vedic injunctions, Krishna only violates the Vedic injunctions in inevitable cases. Since Kamsa could not be killed by anyone but Krishna, Krishna was therefore obliged to kill Kamsa. But as far as Kamsa's eight brothers were concerned, Balaram took charge of killing them. For Balaram's mother, Rohini, although the wife of Vasudev, was not the sister of Kamsa, Therefore, Balaram took charge of killing all of Kamsa's eight brothers. Balaram immediately took up an available weapon, most probably the elephant's tusk which he carried, and killed the eight brothers one after another, just as a lion kills a flock of deer. Krishna and Balaram thus verified the statement that the Supreme Personality of Godhead appears in order to give protection to the pious and to kill the impious demons who are always enemies of the demigods. Meanwhile, the demigods from the higher planetary systems then showered flowers congratulating Krishna and Balaram. Among the demigods, were powerful personalities like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, and all of them joined together in showing their jubilation over Kamsa's death. There was the beating of drums and the showering of flowers from the heavenly planets, and the wives of the demigods danced in ecstasy. The wives of Kamsa and his eight brothers were aggrieved at the sudden death of their husbands 
And so all of them struck their foreheads and shed torrents of tears, crying loudly and embracing the bodies of their dead husbands, which lay on the wrestling dais. The wives of Kamsas and his brothers lamented, and they addressed the dead bodies. Oh, our dear husbands, you are so kind, and you are the protectors of your dependents. But now, after your deaths, we also are dead, along with your house and children. We no longer look auspicious. On account of your death, the auspicious functions to take place, such as the sacrifice of the bow, have all been spoiled. Oh, dear husbands, you treated persons ill who were faultless, and as a result, you have been killed. For this is inevitable, because a person who torments an innocent person must be punished by the laws of nature. We know that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna is the supreme master and supreme enjoyer of everything. Therefore, one who neglects Krishna's authority can never be happy. And ultimately, just as you all have, one meets death. Since Krishna was kind and affectionate to his aunts, Krishna solaced them as far as possible. The ritualistic ceremonies performed after death were then conducted under the personal supervision of Krishna because Krishna happened to be the nephew of all the dead princes. And after finishing this business, Krishna and Balaram immediately released their father and mother, Vasudev and Devaki, who had been imprisoned by Kamsa. Krishna and Balaram fell at their parents' feet and offered them prayers. Vasudev and Devaki have suffered so much trouble from Kamsa only because Krishna was their son. Devaki and Vasudev were fully conscious of Krishna's exalted position as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, Although Krishna touched their feet and offered them obeisances and prayers, they did not embrace Krishna, but simply stood up to hear the Supreme Personality of Godhead speak. Although Krishna was born as their son, Vasudev and Devaki were always conscious of Krishna's position. Now there are Srimad Bhagavatam notes on this section. Many people in the audience thought that Kamsa had simply been knocked unconscious when thrown from the lofty dais. Therefore, Lord Krishna dragged Kamsa's course, corpse so that everyone really realized that the evil king Kamsa was indeed dead. Thus, how surprised the people were that the king was suddenly dead and gone. Although born out of fear, Kamsa's constant meditation on the Supreme Lord eradicated all of his offenses, and therefore the demon was liberated upon his death at the hands of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This episode is entitled Krishna Consoles Vasudev and Devaki so when Lord Krishna saw Vasudev and Devaki 
standing in a reverential attitude, Krishna immediately expanded his influence of Yoga Maya so that they could treat him and Balaram as their children. As in the material world, the relationship existing between father and mother and children can be established amongst different living entities by the influence of the illusory energy, so too, by the influence of yoga maya, the devotee can establish a relationship in which the Supreme Personality of Godhead is one's child. So after creating this situation by his yoga maya, Krishna, appearing along with his elder brother Balaram as the most illustrious boy in the dynasty of the Sattvatas, very submissively and respectfully addressed Vasudev and Devaki. My dear father and mother, although you have always been anxious for the protection of our lives, you could not enjoy the pleasure of having us as your children, as your babies, as your growing boys, and as your adolescent youths. In this way, Krishna indirectly praised the fatherhood of Nanda Maharaj and motherhood of Yashoda as most glorious because although Krishna and Balaram were not actually their babies, Nanda and Yashoda actually enjoyed Krishna and Balaram's childhood pastimes. For by nature's own arrangement, the childhood of the embodied living being is enjoyed by the parents. Even in the animal kingdom, parents are found to be affectionate towards their cubs. And being captivated by the activities of their children, the parents take much care for their well-being. But as for Vasudev and Devaki, they were always anxious for the protection of their sons, Krishna and Balaram. And that is why Krishna, right after his appearance, was immediately transferred to another's house. Balaram was also transferred from Devaki's womb to the womb of Rohini. Vasudev and Devaki were full of anxiety for Krishna and Balaram's protection, but still, they could not enjoy their childhood pastime. Krishna then said, Unfortunately, being ordered by our fate, we could not be raised by our real parents to enjoy childhood pleasures at home. My dear father and mother, a man cannot repay his debt to his parents from whom he gets this body which can bestow upon him all the benefits of material existence. According to Vedic injunctions, this human form of life enables one to perform all kinds of religious activities, fulfill all kinds of desires, to acquire all kinds of wealth. And only in this human form is there every possibility that one can get liberation from material existence. This body is produced by the combined efforts of the father and mother. Every human being should be obliged to one's parents and understand that one cannot repay one's debt to the parents. If after growing up, a son does not try to satisfy his parents by his actions or by an endowment of riches, he is surely punished after death by the superintendent of death, Yamaraj, and is made to eat his own flesh. If a person is able to care for or give protection to one's old parents, 
a chaste wife, children, spiritual master, brahmanas, and other dependents, but does not do so, then one is considered already dead, although one is supposedly breathing. My dear father and mother, you have always been anxious for our protection, but unfortunately, we could not render any service to you. Up until now, we have simply wasted our time, for we could not serve you for reasons beyond our control. Oh, dear father and mother, please excuse us for our sinfulness. When the Supreme Personality of Godhead was speaking as an innocent boy in very sweet words, Vasudeva and Devaki became captivated by parental affection and now embraced Krishna with great pleasure. Vasudeva and Devaki were amazed and could not speak or answer the words of Krishna but they simply embraced Krishna and Balaram in great affection and remained silent, shedding incessant tears. Here are the notes from the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. If Vasudeva and Devaki would have seen Krishna as Almighty God, then their intense love for Krishna as their son would have been spoiled. Krishna did not want this. Rather, Krishna want to in, wanted to enjoy with them the ecstatic love of Vatsalya Rasa, the relationship between parents and children. Although we normally think of God as the Supreme Father, in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, we can enter into the Lord's pastimes and play the part of his parents, thus intensifying our love for him. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya This episode is entitled Krishna installs Ugrasena as king. Thus, having consoled his father and mother, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, appearing as the beloved child of Devaki, then approached his grandfather Ugrasena and announced that Ugrasena would now be the king of the Yadu kingdom. Kamsa had been forcibly ruling the kingdom of Yadu in spite of the presence of his father whom Kamsa had arrested. But now, after the death of Kamsa, Kamsa's father Ugrasena was released and was announced to be the monarch of the Yadu kingdom. It appears in those days that in the western part of India, there were many small kingdoms ruled over by the Yadu dynasty, Andaka dynasty, Vrishni dynasty, and Bhoja dynasty. Maharaj Ugrasena belonged to the Bhoja dynasty, therefore, Krishna indirectly declared that the king of the Boja dynasty would be the emperor of all the other small kingdoms. Krishna willingly asked Maharaj Ugrasena to rule over himself and Balaram because they were his subjects. The word praja is used both for progeny and for citizens. So Krishna belonged to both as Praja, both as grandson of Maharaj Ugrasena and as a member of the Yadu dynasty. 
Thus, Krishna voluntarily accepted the rule of Maharaj Ugrasena. Krishna then informed Ugrasena, being cursed by Yayati, the kings of the Yadu dynasty will never occupy the throne. So it will be our pleasure to act as your servants, King Ugrasena, and my full cooperation with you will make your position more exalted and secure so that the kings of the other dynasties will not hesitate to pay their respective revenues to you. Protected by me, you will be honored even by the demigods from the heavenly planets. My dear grandfather, out of fear of my late uncle Kamsa, all the kings belonging to the Yadu, Vrishni, Andaka, Madhu, Darshaku, and Kukura dynasties were very anxious and disturbed. Now, you can pacify them and give them assurance of security. Now, the whole kingdom will be peaceful. All the kings in the neighboring area had left their homes out of fear of Kamsa and were living in different parts of the country. But now, after the death of Kamsa and the reinstallment of Ugrasena as king, the neighboring kings were given all kinds of presentations and comforts. Then they returned to their respective homes. After this nice political arrangement, the citizens of Mathura were pleased to live in Mathura, being protected by the strong arms of Krishna and Balaram. On account of good government, in the presence of Krishna and Balaram, the inhabitants of Mathura felt complete satisfaction in the fulfillment of all their material desires and necessities. And because they saw Krishna and Balaram every day face to face, they soon forgot all material miseries completely. As soon as they saw Krishna and Balaram coming out onto the street, very nicely dressed and smiling, and looking at the citizens with grace, the citizens were filled with loving ecstasies simply by seeing the personal presence of Mukunda. Indeed, the very name Mukunda refers to one who can award liberation and transcendental pleasure. Krishna's presence acted as such a vitalizing tonic that not only the younger generation, but even the old men of Mathura became fully invigorated with youthful energy and strength simply by regularly seeing Krishna. So now we will do our weekly blessing, the insurance policy of Krishna. Namaste Narasimhaya Praklad Akhlad Dayane Hiranya Kashi Purvaksha Shila Tangana Kalaye Hito Nasringa Parato Yato Yato Yami Tato Narsingha Bahir Narsingho Ridaye Narsingho Narsingho Adim Sharanam Prabhadye Narsingho Adim Sharanam Prabhadye Nrsingham Adin Sharanam Prabhadye Tavakarakam Lavarenakam Adbhuta Sringham Dalit 
Kolkata, Hiranyakashipu, Tanu Bringam, Keshapadrita, Narahadi Rupa, Jai Jagadisha Hare, Jai Jagadisha Hare, Jai Jagadisha Hare, Keshapadrita, Narahadi Rupa, Jai Jagadisha Hare, Jai Jagadisha Hare, Jai Jagadisha Hare, Jai Jagadish, Jai Jagadish, Jai Jagadish, Hare, Hare, Jai Jagadish. Hare Om Tat Sat